Uh, so I absolutely loved racing and I think I owe almost everything I've got in my life right now I owe that to my racing career and to my parents supporting me through that. Um, the reason I stopped was I basically got to a point where I realised I could still make it further in the sport and I still definitely had room to improve but it was going to take more effort than I wanted to put into it. I realised there was other better things for me to be doing and you know I spent years travelling around resorts all over the world and each resort I'd go to I'd ski the same piece every time I went and you know I'd spend half my time looking up at cliffs and steep snowy faces and gullies and stuff above the race piece and wanting to be there. Okay, 10 seconds. The thing that makes Scottish skiing so special for me is you don't always expect it to be good. You know, our weather is pretty unpredictable. We've got the sea on all three sides of the country. Um, and so it just makes our snow conditions and weather conditions very different to what you get in the Alps. Uh, it also makes it a bit less predictable. So when it is good, it's pretty special because you just you don't know if you're going to get a good day in the Alps you go for a week and you'd expect to get a week of good skiing you can't really just say oh I'm going to go skiing for a week in Scotland you really have to be sitting looking at weather forecasts ready to pounce as soon as the weather gets good uh, drive north and go enjoy the hills
skiing in Scotland compared to the Alps is a bit like climbing in Scotland compared to the Alps. Um, people go out to the Alps and very short approaches to climb huge long routes that aren't massively technically difficult but they're really big long things and there's altitude and all these kind of things to take into account. In Scotland um, a lot of the time it's really big long approaches up flat valleys that might be boggy or there might be river crossings and stuff and the snow line in fact or the, the amount of vertical distance you can cover on snow is pretty short because obviously we've got quite small mountains and the snow particularly at this time of year only starts halfway up them so um, the way you keep things interesting I guess is you've got to push limits of what's possible in terms of technical descents. Like the climbing it's very short but intense and um, I've managed to tick off a few really cool gullies this year that none of them are particularly long, they take barely a couple minutes to get down but incredibly technical whether you've got ice steps halfway down or there's um, rock steps that you need to climb down, all these kind of things, no fall zones, that's what makes it interesting for me. And he said to me, he'd climbed so-and-so gully, I couldn't remember the name of it and I knew nothing about it. Anyway, I skied the northeast face of Stobcorn and Lochin, which was my main objective. And at the bottom I was sat just having lunch and I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to, to ski another line. Uh, anyway, I spotted his tracks going off into the distance and I decided, you know what, I'll go and follow them, see what I can find, and right enough, I ended up climbing this gully. I had a big rock step in the middle, um, which there's some footage of, um, but managed to climb that all the way to the summit, and, and I skied it as well, which was brilliant. Probably one of the more exposed and interesting lines I've skied, um, particularly when you know about three quarters of the way down, there's this big rocky, icy step thing that you've got to climb down. I think ideally you'd probably abseil it, but um, I don't know. I hadn't planned for that and I was happy enough down climbing it, so. Thank mm -hmm. you.
it's funny, it's something I feel like I say a lot, but a good day in Scotland genuinely is as good as anywhere else. But in fact, more than that, it's so rewarding because you just don't know if you're going to get a good day. You probably spend weeks looking at forecasts before you get a good day and you've got to be out there on at least two or three bad weather days to get one good weather day. And so when it finally all lines up and everything works out, um, it's just that bit more exciting, that bit more special.